watching when they played Panama, and it was in Phoenix. It was in Glendale. Yeah. Well, OMG. Had, had this last wow. Yeah. Is that crazy? Yeah. yeah. And then it went on to Charlotte and other places. But Oh, um, so they were shifting cities. Yeah. Yeah. And the final okay. was in Miami last night. And wow. unfortunately, Columbia lost one to nothing. Ah. Uh. But, but so much fun being in the popular areas and re walking through re where restaurants and bars are all over the place. Everybody's got a Colombian soccer shirt on. Everybody's happy. Everybody's celebrating. It's really fun. It's yeah. really fun to be here. What a coincidence. Eh, el fútbol es tan, tan, tan popular. Eh, sí. sí. Y... Uh, Hay fanáticos del fútbol por todas partes. There are football fans all over the place, sí, en yeah. Sudamérica. Yeah. Uh, y, pues, sí. Uh, <laughs> excelente. Gracias. Gracias. Uh, bien. Y bienvenidos. Y buenos días. Buenos días. Feliz lunes. Yes. Happy Monday. Feliz lunes. Uh, llovió un poquito aquí. Uh, estoy muy contenta por la, la cantidad muy la cantidad muy pequeña, the really small amount, la cantidad muy pequeña de, de lluvia uh, que tuvimos anoche. Yeah? We got just a tiny bit. I hope you got a little bit of that too. Uh, Probably got more dust. Mucho, ru mucho, ru mucho ru ruido. Uh, y, y, sí. Sí. Ok. Bien. Bueno, entonces, vamos a practicar hoy. Uh, uh, voy, voy, a, voy a tomar las preguntas que quizás ustedes uh, tengan de los videos. Y tenemos un... Uh, algo para preparar para el, el video de, uh, de la próxima semana, de la semana que viene. At the end, I need to make sure I save a little bit of preview time because uh, we're going to do a quick walkthrough with the issue of numbers again to revisit numbers because you're going to have a video this week for your listening comprehension practice that's going to be packed, packed, packed with numbers. But it is tremendously interesting uh, uh, grocery shopping kind of video. You'll see what we mean. Ah, uh, bien. Entonces, entonces, primero... Primero quiero saber si, si ustedes uh, tienen preguntas. I want to know first if you've got questions. Y uh, pueden ver Agustina. Can you see Agustina? Agustina. Sí, o no? sí. sí. Sí, bien. Ok. Uh, ella habló en... Uh, quiero saber si ustedes tienen preguntas del primer video y el primer video aquí eh, uh, ella la que viaja mucho she's the one who uh, practice or travels a lot ¿sí? uh, ella evalúa she evaluates evalúa um, los cinco países en su opinión los cinco mejores uh, países um, de habla español, sí. Uh, the five Spanish-speaking countries that she thinks are the best to travel to, sí. Y la... Costa Rica. Sí, Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Su, sí, la primera nación, el primer uh, um, país es Costa Rica. Y Costa Rica... Um, Lo que ustedes deben saber, what you guys ought to know about Costa Rica, ¿sí? Uh, the watchword always for Costa Rica is pura vida, pura vida, pure life, pura vida. Pura vida is the way that people even greet each other rather than buenos dias. Pura vida uh, really embodies the spirit, the idea of Costa Rica. Uh, 
los deportes acuáticos, sí, ¿sí? los deportes acuáticos y también a uh, la aventura en general. Uh, sí, no es solamente cuestión de deportes uh, acuáticos, sí, uh, uh, la experiencia de usar un zipline, sí. Uh -huh. uh, uh, hay, hay mucho, uh, el ecoturismo, el ecoturismo, ecotourism, el ecoturismo también es algo muy popular en Costa Rica. Ok, el segundo país es Perú, uh, Perú y quiero decirles algunas cositas. Uh, ¿Ustedes entendieron lo del, la, de las líneas de Nazca? Did you understand the Nazca lines thing? No, I, I, had I, never, I, I didn't. I had never yeah, heard I did not. It. A lot of people have not heard about the Nazca line thing, so I wanted I, to leave a little bit of time yeah. to talk about that. Las líneas de Nazca, we we call them in English the the Nazca lines. Y si es cómo se escribe Nazca, creo que se escribe. N A Z Z C O O oh, C A perdón C A Nazca. Um, these are drawings which, if you go there as a tourist, they may say, "Yeah, you should know." You actually have to be up in a plane to see mm -hmm. these, mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe a hang glider. I don't know if you're that adventurous. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if there are places they can launch hang gliders from to actually even do that, but okay. Um, the Nazca lines are uh, curiosity. They are dibujos. They are drawings. They are drawings mm -hmm. in the soil. They depict all kinds of animals. I think some are just geometric, but a lot of them are animals. So there's like a, a famous spider drawing and a monkey drawing and bird drawings. They can only be seen from an aerial view. And nobody really knows what the heck, how these were made. <laughs> But um, are, are, they, are they, are they like yeah. piles of stones or how, what, what, what they are, are not piles made of out stones? Of? They are actually, I believe, dug into the ground. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, if you want to know more about those, I would encourage you to Google Nazca lines, but you have to know how to spell it. And N-A-Z-C-A, Nazca. Uh, and, you, and it will give you more pictures. Uh, aquí tenemos un mono. Here we've got a monkey. Uh, but they are quite famous. And uh, it, it really is a mystery. And of course, it feeds all the thing. You know, ooh, do, 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 you know, uh, extraterrestres. Yeah, the extraterrestrial thing gets fueled by this. Mm. But they are quite <laughs> remarkable and really unusual. And nobody really understands what the heck. Well, Marilyn, Marilyn are, are they like our petrographs here in the Arizona? You know, that's an interesting... Oh, que interesante. How interesting. I I think in a way you could compare mm -hmm. it to that. Although I know that petroglyphs, the ones we have here, you oh, know, there are issues of some of them were actually made with acid etching from acids mm -hmm. from, you know, like uh, fruit juices uh, or plant materials that are acidic and there are others that are just carvings and there are differences yeah. even in the southwest here with the whole petroglyphs thing not sure but these are huge those are huge mm -hmm. unlike our petroglyphs which mm -hmm. uh you know can be huge they can cover whole rock faces for vast yeah. stretches these are like huge in the ground mm -hmm. so yes For example, for example, you know, when you look at this, this monkey, el mono, <laughs> uh, you know, you're, you're viewing this from way up right. in the air. So okay. how that is made is really, or how that was made is quite a mystery. It's a mystery. Yeah. Es un misterio. Y la otra cosa interesante del Perú es la comida. Uh, oh Agustina nos dijo que la Oh. Influencia de la comida mm. peruana, la gastronomía peruana, tiene influencias de oh. 
sí, uh -huh. de la cultura Japón. indígena y de Japón. Japón. ¿Y Japón. por qué Japón? You may wonder mm. why would Japanese cuisine be an, a, a thing uh -huh. with Perú. Uh, muchas personas uh, emigraron um, desde Japón a Perú. Uh, in many of the great migrations of the early or late 1800s, early 1900s, there was a large influx of Japanese immigrants into Peru. As a matter of fact, they've even had a, one of their presidents was of uh, Japanese ancestry. So, awesome. yeah, actually, Japanese cuisine is a big deal in Peru because mm -hmm. of the number of people who immigrated there. Okay. Okay. Uh, para que sepan, she didn't really explain that, so uh, I thought you might want to know. Ah, uh, Cuba, Cuba is not a place that we can easily go as U.S. citizens. Uh, no. uh, but everybody else goes there for vacation. <laughs> <laughs> y las playas, yeah, the, the mm. beaches, everybody who goes there really goes crazy over the beaches. Sí, las playas de Cuba son playas mm. muy hermosas. Y claro, sí, España, que es tan interesante, mm. uh, y Argentina. Ok, porque ella es Argentina, because she is Argentina, of course, she was going to mention that. <laughs> One interesting thing about Argentina, however, that people should know. Buenos Aires is always, of course, the first place people think about with uh, uh, Argentina. And Buenos Aires is a very cosmopolitan city. It is a very European feel kind of city. Um And of course, as there were lots of Japanese immigrants to uh, Peru for a window of time with uh, Argentina, the Italian immigration and German immigration as well. Those were two big ethnic groups yeah. that uh, flooded into uh, uh, Argentina uh, well, during, just... yeah, it, it was, uh, uh, but Italianos especialmente, especially with the Italians, Um, there's a lot of uh, little little word influences with Argentine Spanish from Italy, little things that rub off uh, a lot of, uh, you know, food influence with Italians, with Argentine cooking as well. Mm. Uh, so the, uh, the Italian connection with Argentines is huge. Uh, lots, loads and loads and loads of people in Argentina have Italian surnames have Italian backgrounds, mm. you know, a huge percentage of their population. If they take the little DNA tests, I don't know, I want to say probably <laughs> at least 50, maybe 60, mm. maybe even higher percent of the people mm. will have somebody in their family background from Italy. Because um, mm. many people immigrated for work reasons. So, you know, uh, the other thing that a lot of people should know about with Argentina mm. Is if you get out of that Buenos Aires, uh, 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 like a it, get out of the city visit mode and get into if you're into outdoor and hiking type things. Once the further south you go from Buenos Aires, and you once you get into that uh, Patagonia region, way in the southern tip of Argentina, uh, there are loads of of places besides these falls. Uh, Patagonia is a, um, has been a real hotbed of tourism as well um, because it is so scenic. Uh, uh, para que sepan, so you know, okay? Mm. Uh, yeah. So people go there for the uh, la naturaleza, sí. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Tienen alguna algunas preguntas. Do you, do you have some questions about that video? Anything she framed that didn't quite make sense? No. I, I have one. Sí, bien. Um, there were a number of times, and the first one, I believe, was at about two minutes and 15 or so seconds, where she used the pronoun vos, oh. which I kind of gathered was like a short, <laughs> shortened vosotros, But I'm also kind of wondering, I thought you were you were kind of have told us all along that that's really only used in Spain. So um, I was just a little kind of curious of kind of 
how she came to be using that so frequently in her dialogue. Boss is a thing. Okay. Uh, mm, vale la pena. Okay. Yeah. This is worth a mini discussion. Um, because anytime you, Ooh, let, let me see if I can get my whiteboard to work. That's kind of a question mark. I don't know. Oh. She, she, she used it in the phrase, Vos tenes que something. I didn't write down the rest of it, but sí, you, tenés. you have to do something. Oh, tenés, yeah. sí, tenés. Uh, pueden ver. Can you see my smart board? Yes. My yes, whiteboard? My whiteboard, yeah. You can see my whiteboard. Okay. Well, we see okay. navigate your workspace. Uh, ooh, okay. Mm. Let me make sure it works because sometimes mm. some of you may have to just like type any key on your board so that you can see it. Let me let me get an actual text box up. Text. There right. You, you can see that. Wait a minute. You can see that. I have to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, boss looks like. <clears throat> hmm, you may say to yourself, "Is that so short for vosotros?" Is that an abbreviation? Uh, what is that? Well, it is uh, vosotros, which is used really only in Spain, not in Latin America, is the plural for tú. Okay, that's the plural for tú. It's like oh. uh, in in Spain, not Argentina, where she's from. In Spain, vosotros is the plural for tú. So many people use. Vosotros, and here's the rub, the accompanying verb conjugations that are made for vosotros. So it means you got to learn like extra conjugations, which actually are not as hard as people think they are, but okay. Uh, people use vosotros in Spain liberally because if you walk into a bar, a cafe, anywhere, and you're talking to more than one person, you're saying, hey, you guys. And as long as they're friends of yours, people are going to use vosotros. But you will not hear vosotros outside of Spain. Um, okay. Uh, vos is not related <laughs> to vosotros. However, should we, should we be seeing your whiteboard now? Because you should yes. be seeing it. Can you not see it? I can see it. This is see it. I can see it. I can see it. Anybody who cannot see it. It's well, just, it's just me. The screen I'm looking at just says navigate your workspace. No. no. Or right click to quickly move Mark, around. Um, I'm going to ask you to like type on any key. Yeah. Like if you can get a key to that board and type any key it well, might make I'm, that go away i'm trying but i don't i guess i'm not doing something right but go ahead okay let me take this off we'll try a different thing that has happened and and my my daughter told me that the way she got rid of it was to type on any key but if that's not working for you we don't want to have that issue so let me go someplace else something i know you'll be able to see And make sure I make this into a font that is easily viewed. Vale, bueno. Okay, this you can see. There we go. Mejor. Take calendar. I don't want that. Okay. Uh, vos is an equivalent. Uh, this is this is not strictly speaking true. But it's the closest uh, I can explain uh, because you will hear people even uh, uh, having varying opinions on who it's appropriate to use bus with. I'm not going to go down that wormhole. It is a wormhole. But is it ca it's a casual? It is casual. Pronoun? Bus, bus is uh, an equivalent for tu. Uh, it is used more than tu. Um, in some places in Latin America, 
And uh, I'm going to say, even when you look there, it's kind of odd because it's a pocket thing. Now, the one place where you are, there are a couple places where you can say that Bolsa is very liberally used all over is Argentina, Uruguay, uh, Paraguay. That, you know, little pocket that hugs around Brazil. Okay. And in those places, you will hear Bolsa more than you hear Tu. Um, and this is something that evolved over hundreds of years. It has to do with, you know, immigrants coming from Spain to Latin America. And of course, there being a great big ocean be between Latin America and Spain. Uh, Bos was a very ancient thing used in Spain. And we're talking like go back to the 1500s. So, you know, again, a big warm bowl. But um, Bos is usually used for very close friends. Very close. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it has accompanying conjugations in present tense. So uh, the way you use instead of tienes, instead of tienes, which is the tu form of, you know, uh, tener, right? Mm -hmm. Tienes, you'll hear tenes. Okay. And uh, it, the both forms do not use a stem change. Okay, uh, and uh, but they kind of get that S at the end like tu has. So, yeah, you'll hear a few things and uh, uh, so just know when you hear that and, you know, tenes sounds a little bit like tienes and treat it as if it were tienes. I guess that's what I will tell you. But you hear it in pockets. So here are the other little pockets. There are some parts of Colombia where people will use bos. But again, it's kind of a regional. Depende. It depends. Some areas it's kind of dominant. Some not. Um, some areas of Bolivia, you'll hear bos. Uh, but it's kind of a pocket type thing. Um not as big a deal in Mexico, but there are some pockets even there where, you know, you'll hear it thrown around here and there. So it does have accompanying verb conjugations. Um, they sound kind of like what you think they should be, except you don't have a stem change there. And there are present tense things and they, yeah, so... I would say don't worry about it a lot, but yeah, they pop up. But the happy thing is, even if you don't know both conjugations, oh, you kind of know, well, that sounds like it's from Tener. Yep, it is. So Bos is just a friendly way of saying a you, addressing people as you. Okay. Bos tenes, you have. Bos tenes. And, uh, but, uh, I, I always hesitate with how much you go into bus because it really depends on where you travel. How intensely do you need bus? Mm -hmm. Argentina intensely, you need bus, but not necessarily every place else. And it's kind of hard to tell where you'll need more of it mm -hmm. and where you won't. Uh, gracias, Marcos. Thank you, Marcos. It, it's a very good question. Okay. Uh, otra pregunta. Any other question that you have from the video? Si o no? No. Nada? Nada, nada? Okay. Bien. I have uh, a uh, oh, ¿sí? question. Sorry. Yep. So um, we, you were talking about the... In the video, they talked about the Japanese influence on cuisine, like in Peru sí, sí. and stuff. I assume sí. that means like they eat sushi and a lot of rice. Yeah, see, sí, yeah. Is that it? Is that why? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that the whole thing of uh, ceviche, which is kind yeah. of akin. Yeah. yeah. Ceviche, we can even get here. <laughs> mm -hmm, um, right. Yeah, which is uh, you basically let the the fish, well, cook in qu air quotes, yeah, with citrus juices, lime juices, and lemon juices. Right. That's kind of an outgrowth of that. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I was surprised by that. I did not know that about Peru. 
So, and yeah, yeah so, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very into the whole cuisine thing in Peru and being very inventive, uh, with that. See, sí, Cindy. Um, just, to, it, it's not really relevant to the film, but there is, um, an, an animal that's really popular in Peru. Everybody eats it and it looks like a huge rat. Do you know Cui? what the name of it is? Cui? 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 See, guinea pig. See, see you, why? Cui. It's like a guinea pig. Yes. It, it, guinea pig. it is guinea a guinea pig. pig. See, sí. yes. es muy popular. Um, Cui is very popular. Do they eat in Ecuador too? It is essentially a guinea pig. Um, oh my God. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, lots of people serve it. Lots of people. Oh, God. But it does look like a rat. <laughs> it looks like a rat on a stick. Yeah. yeah. If, it, if it's skewered <laughs> and kind of roasted. and Yeah. yeah. And my friend, I had dinner with her and she ordered one. And I about choked when I saw it. Um, it was just grilled. It was the whole thing. The head, yes. tail, oh. whole nine yards. Um, <laughs> so, uh, when you I, ate it, I'm going to do a quick uh, Kui Google, no. Google so that uh, people can. Uh, it says guinea pig for that word. It, <laughs> it, it, it is okay. Bien. What? Oh, does it taste like chicken? I, okay. I had yeah. I had had on, so you know what yeah. Kui looks like. Because this is going to be, I'm pretty oh. sure, from what Sydney, is very accurate. Kui. Yeah, right. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Here's no. your little grilled kui. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, boy. I, uh, for, for, for the... I had it uh, in Ecuador. Oh, it, boy. It, it, Ecuador. It's sort of, it's sort of oily it. chicken. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I and I've heard food. the whole thing of, yes, it tastes like chicken. I've heard it's this so from rats. people who've had <laughs> it. I, I don't know if that's true from personal experience, but this is what I hear. <laughs> that whole thing of it tastes like chicken apparently well, is a thing with kui. Uh, and yeah, no, I know for American no sensibilities, way. this looks a little, it's a bit off-putting, isn't it? However, muy popular. Yeah. Pretty sure. close, Cindy, to what you've seen? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Just as, yep. as a joke, as a joke to this friend, I didn't let her see it, but I took the, the skeleton, yep. the head, and cleaned it and framed it and gave it to her for a present. As I said, anybody, anybody who will eat a rat deserves <laughs> to have a, 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 uh, some kind of a... Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I believe that. Sure. There you go. Yeah. There. Cool. Um, <laughs> it is a rodent. Yes. And uh, it is a guinea pig. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's often yeah. how it is brought yeah. to your table. It's very popular. I know people love it. She thought it was good. Mm -hmm. It is, it is a, a popular thing. And uh, yeah, a, this came up with Ecuador, but you know, that whole area mm -hmm. through there, it's uh it's a thing. <laughs> um, yeah. We had a that pet goes, guinea yeah. pig. It was a pet. Oh, right no. on a stick. There you go. Uh, <laughs> a guinea pig on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I, I'm sure mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, there are things we eat that probably other yeah. people in other countries think. Do not like. That's true. Yeah gross but yeah. you know well you know uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's gotta be in a pen it's gotta live in a pen yeah <laughs> it's, it's not a dog it lives in a pen, you can eat it <laughs> uh, yeah i see okay uh yeah. okay the second video you had uh moving on uh this I basically gave you to listen to so that you could yes. hear a lot of just average daily life mm. kind of sentences, you know? Um, uh, and I just want to know quickly before we go on to practice, if you had any questions of anything she said through there, I wanted you to have a nice representative thing of talking about daily activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she did a good job. Yeah. See?
Está bien. Fácil de entender, easy to understand. Sí. Ella habla muy lentamente, muy despacio. She speaks very slowly, so it's uh, easy to understand her in most. Oh, it, this just reminds me. Last night, <laughs> this is a fragmented thought. The announcers for the soccer game, I've never, they sounded like auctioneers. Ah. Uh. It was so fast. You couldn't pick up anything. I could I could not a word, but they sounded like auctioneers. Well, so what channel did you watch? What channel was that? Was that Fox? Was oh, that no, on no. Fox? I'm in I'm in uh, Colombia, so I watched oh, it on Columbia. a station here, Colombia, South America. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I wish everybody could hear it because <laughs> it, it was amazing. It was. Uh, yeah, I I've heard people do. Uh, soccer game calling and it's yeah it, it's well part of it yeah. i think is just the emotion of being very excited about yeah who's yeah. got the ball who's passing the ball and yeah it, it goes it's probably not the best example for uh a, a listen comprehension oh. thing. you, oh. you want to listen to a news <laughs> program not a sports thing yeah if it uh, had been english i could not have understood it That yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Bien. Bueno. Uh, adelante, adelante. Uh, let's go on. And I want to make sure we get some time to actually get you to share some um, experiences. See, ¿Sí? vamos a compartir ideas. We're going to share some ideas. Vamos a... Hablar de experiencias. Uh, um, and, y el título aquí es del video de Agustina, uh, que se trata de sus países favoritos, uh, about Agustina's video, which is about her favorite countries. ¿Cuáles son los dos o tres de... Uh, uh, ¿Cuáles son dos o tres uh, lugares uh, de... Dos o tres de... Perdón de tus lugares favoritos. Habla de una ciudad en Estados Unidos o en otro país. If you have never traveled out of the country, of course, uh, pick up on any experiences here within where we live. Uh, sí. Um, ¿Por qué te gusta visitarlo? Dos o tres lugares favoritos aquí en Estados Unidos o en otros países que son sus favoritos that are your favorites y por qué and the why alguien quiere hablar de eso what's it okay obviamente para mí uno de mis lugares favoritos uh, uh, es, es España porque me gusta tanto, me gusta tanto la cultura, me gusta tanto la comida y el ambiente, the surroundings, el ambiente, the atmosphere, el ambiente uh, de la gente en España. Pero también me gusta a uh, muchos lugares uh, aquí también en Estados Unidos. Uh, y prefiero, por lo general, los lugares que tienen actividades al aire libre. Para mí, para mí, uh, prefiero los lugares donde hay actividades al aire libre. Uh, bien, para ustedes, for you guys. Okay. Lugares favoritos. Bueno, sí, Cindy. Sí. Uh, mi zona o aire uh, favorita es el, en el mundo es el distrito, distrito de los lagos en Chile. Ah. Es muy, sí, es muy hermoso y tranquilo con volcanes, volcanes largos, montañas, granjas y gente amable. 
Y gente amable, sí, bien, sí. Uh, la geografía de otros lugares muchas veces es algo que, que es muy interesante, especialmente cuando hay montañas. Hay personas que prefieren tomar las vacaciones en lugares con playas y playas y agua, ¿sí? Y hay otra gente como yo, que hay otra gente que prefiere lugares con montañas y desiertos y bosques y una variedad de, de, de geografía, ¿sí? que es interesante para mí. Y en, en Chile hay muchas montañas. Es un, sí. un lugar muy, muy montañoso. Uh, aunque tiene playas, sí, también tiene playas. Sí, sí. sí. A y largo. Muchos lagos también. Y muchos lagos. Ah, bien, interesante, sí. Uh, lagos cerca de las montañas, creo, ¿no? Sí. Sí, okay. y cerca de volcanes. Volcán. Y cerca, de, y, sí, y volcanes, uh, los volcanes que son muy interesantes también. Bueno, uh, excelente y gente amable. Uh, bien, alguien más, anybody else, un lugar interesante. Uh, Marco, sí. Uh. En Estados Unidos, uh, me gusta la ciudad Nueva Orleans. Ah. Cuando, cuando vi, vivíamos en Houston, volábamos a New, New Orleans por fines de semana largos, una o dos veces la mayoría de los años. Ah. Nos gustó la comida las bebidas y la mm -hmm. música. Sí, 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 excelente. Entonces, uh, Norland, Norland, se dice Norlands, <laughs> bien, sí, ¿verdad? Lo, las personas que viven en New Orleans o uh, dicen Norlands, creo, I think. <laughs> y, uh, bueno, sí, y Norlands es... Eh, es una ciudad muy famosa por, otra vez, la gastronomía, ¿no? Entonces, Norlands fue como un, un escape del fin de semana sí. para ti, ¿sí? Y fácil de viajar, fue fácil de viajar. It was easy to travel to. Fue fácil de viajar para llegar a Norlands. Bien. Um, un vuelo corto, short flight, ¿verdad? Uh, print, uh, ¿Media hora? Media hora. Media hora desde uh, Houston hasta New Orleans, sí, bien. ¿Cómo como es un vuelo de media hora desde Phoenix hacia como uh, Las Vegas, sí? para la gente que, sí, a, a quienes les gusta la, el casino. La, <ríe> a, a, bien, excelente. A, y las bebidas. Mm, los oricanes. ¿Qué tipo de lico, uh, licor se usa para esa bebida? What kind of liquor do they use? ¿Qué Rum. tipo de Ron. ron. El ron. Ah, ok. Ron. Ok, okay. bien. Uh, con, con jugo de fruta. Ron con jugo de, jugo de fruta. Sí. Ok, bien. Excelente. Muy bien. Uh, ¿Qué más? Who else has got something? ¿Qué más? Uh, I, uh, Lisa, did you want to speak? If you do, you're on mute. Take yourself off mute. Oh, still on. Hang on. There you go. Aquí vamos. Well, Here we go. Me gusta visit, visitar las ciudades San Diego. 
Oh, San Diego, sí. porque veo mi prima. Ah, ves a tu prima, ves a tu prima. Tu, tu prima vive en San Diego. Ah, bien, sí. San Diego se dice que el clima es perfecto en San Diego porque no hace mucho calor ni hace mucho frío. Sí, hace fresco casi todo el tiempo. Sí, sí. Y tiene playas muy hermosas en San Diego, ¿sí? English. Ok, bien. Uh, lo que me gusta de California, por lo general, es que es muy fácil, uh, es muy fácil encontrar uh, mariscos, los mariscos frescos, el pescado fresco, ¿sí? En California, en... Cualquier restaurante es fácil encontrar pescado fresco. Y aquí donde vivimos es tan, tan difícil encontrar uh, pescado fresco. Uh, porque no estamos cerca de, del océano. Ok. Y es difícil en, en, en el desierto. Fresco. Uh, ¿Cómo se Fresco y fresh. Fresh, yes, that's what I thought. Fresh, you said. sí. Okay. Bien. Uh, bueno, gracias. Excelente. Uh, ¿Qué más? ¿Algo más, Lisa? ¿O oh, no? Oh, no, nothing else. Ok. San Diego, San Diego, sí. Uh, San Diego, otra vez, es otro lugar que se considera un escape de Phoenix, sí. Un lugar... The escape. It's considered an escape place for Phoenix residents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Se considera un lugar que es fácil de uh, es fácil a uh, salir de Phoenix y llegar a, a San Diego uh, dentro de dentro de poco in a little short while. Sí. Ah, uh, bueno, otro lugar. Otro lugar favorito para visitar. ¿Alguien más? ¿Anybody else? No. I'll go. Sam. Okay. Sam, bien. Me gusta visitar Santa Fe, Nuevo México. Me, me, ah. me Santa Fe tiene una maravillosa, I don't know, cultura Nativa Americana. Mm. Arte. Did you get that? Sí. Okay. Arte fabuloso and ex excelente comedia. Okay. Sí, uh, en Nuevo México, sí, la cultura de los indígenas de Estados Unidos es, mm. es una... Influencia muy fuerte, strong influence, ¿sí? una influencia fuerte en la arquitectura, en, en la comida, me, me imagino, ¿no? Sí. Y todo eso, muy interesante. Y la historia, la historia es muy interesante también. Ok, bien. Algo más de, de visitar, de la experiencia de visitar mm -hmm. otro lugar. Ah, sí, Jim. Sure. Yeah, me encanta montañas. Y me gusta ir a la Canadian Rockies. Ah, the Canadian Rockies. Ok, yeah. sí. Uh, so, las yeah. montañas rocosas, sí. Ro rocosas. Sí. Ah, so mi, mi hijo fue conmigo en junio. Eh, nosotros fuimos de excursión y pasamos tiempo juntos. Ok, sí, uh, mon, uh, mon, sí, montaña que viene de la pa palabra montaña en español, sí, uh, sí. el estado de Montana, uh, uh -huh. eh, sí, es famoso por la naturaleza que tiene. Sí. Muy famosa por la naturaleza, muchas montañas, hace mucho frío en el invierno, 
creo que nadie va durante el invierno. I think nobody goes in winter. Creo que nadie, sí, pero, pero en el verano, muy popular para uh, tomar las vacaciones, para ir de vacaciones, de vacaciones, sí. Excelente. Uh, a ver, bueno, uh, algo más. Algo más o no. Adelante. Una ciudad o área. No importa. Los dos. Yo tengo. Yo, yo have. Ok. Vale. Sí. Uh, mi favorita ciudad es París. Ah. Es, una, es una ciudad con un corazón. La cultura es muy interesante, con muchas tradiciones uh, ante, antiguas. antiguas. A, an, antiguas, tradiciones Antigu antiguas. Sí, los edificio, uh, edificios son hermosos con su arquitectura, historia. El mundo de arte en París es la mejor. Ah, sí. Ah, sí, claro, que es, es una ciudad de belleza, de arte, de edificios muy históricos y, oh, y de comida otra vez. <risa> Se puede comer bien. You can eat sí. well. Se puede comer bien en París. Uh, eso es. Uh, muy bien. Uh, bueno, adelante. We're going to go to the mundane now. <laughs> es fácil hablar de lo cotidiano. It's easy to talk about the everyday stuff. Okay. And the reason you have the second video with the girl just talking about what she does on a daily basis and how one day is maybe different from another and all that is because the things we generally need to be able to talk about a lot if we uh, go as tourists is to talk about everyday life kind of stuff and verbs that will Uh, be used commonly to communicate with the locals about everyday life, you know, uh, trabajar, ir, all the really base verbs that uh, we use to talk about day-to-day -day things. Okay, uh, la primera pre pregunta que tenemos aquí es, ¿cómo son diferentes varios días según tu rutina? How are different Day, uh, days different in your routine versus other days. That was one thing she gave us examples of in her, uh, the second video, si, el segundo video, si. Um, one or two things, okay? We're not looking for term paper stuff here. Just a couple ways that your routine might vary from one day to another, si. ¿Cómo son diferentes uh, uh, varios días según tu rutina? Uh, puedo decirles que, como por ejemplo, um, los, los miércoles para mí, por mí, para mí, los miércoles, uh, miércoles son uh, los días más ocupados. Para mí, porque tengo generalmente dos o tres clases los miércoles, ¿sí? Así que tengo que, uh, tengo que enseñar por lo menos dos veces los miércoles y tengo menos tiempo para cocinar, menos tiempo para Ir al supermercado. Uh, no me gusta hacer citas. I don't like to make appointments. No, no me gusta hacer uh, citas con el dentista o alguien que viene a trabajar uh, en la casa uh, los miércoles. Uh, bien, ustedes, you guys. Sí. Mm. 
Una idea. Any idea? Or no? Sí. 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 Okay, uh, Julie, Julie, uh, let's have Julie go first because she hasn't had a chance yet today. De lunes a viernes, voy a clases, juego pickleball y mahjong y hago ejercicio. El fin de semana tengo una rutina diferente. Los sábados voy a mirar mis nietos jugando muy deporte, deportes. Ah. Los domingos preparo una gran cena para mi familia. Ah, sí. Por lo general, sí. Si... Ustedes tienen nietos, if you guys have grandkids, ¿sí? Para los que tienen nietos o hijos, uh, mm. los, sábado, uh, los sábados especialmente, quizás los domingos, son días muy ocupados. Siempre los nietos o los hijos siempre tienen actividades los sábados actividades de deportes, actividades de clases de música o actividades, sí, uh, fiestas de cumpleaños de los amiguitos, their little friends, birthday parties, sí. Siempre hay actividades uh, los fines de semana on weekends. Y, sí, tienes razón. Ok, perfecto. Que más? Who else has something about? I have a couple things. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Vale. So, yep. Juego partidos de tenis los miércoles y, ah. uh -huh, y escucho programas de música clásica los domingos. Ah, <laughs> bien, bien, <laughs> excelente. <laughs> sí. Uh, tienes, cuando juegas al tenis, tienes uh, que tener una cita específica, do you need a specific date, si sí, para usar los um, lugares? I play every Wednesday. I don't, Lo, I don't, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Enten, mm -hmm. Entonces, tienes una reserva. You've got a, a like a reservation. Sí, una reserva. Yeah. ¿sí? Yeah. Matches. Yep. Sí. Mm -hmm. Eso. Bien. Sí. Perfecto. Mm -hmm. Bien. Uh, vale. Ah, uh, en la cancha. Ah, a way to talk about the court. Sí, una reserva de la cancha. La cancha. La cancha es the court area. Eh, donde jugamos a, a un depar, deporte como tenis. Ok, vale. Bueno, ¿quién más? Who else has something? I'll try. Bien. I'll try. A veces me ducho por la mañana cuando tengo que hacer re, recados. Para mi ducho por la noche cuando trabajo en el patio durante el día. Ok. Bien. Excelente. Muy bien. Gracias. ¿Alguien más? ¿Anybody else? Got something. No. Bueno, sí, Marcos. Sí. Los días que... Voy a partidos de béisbol. Ah. Preparo... Béisbol. Pre preparo mis tarjetas y pelotas para intentar conseguir autog autógrafos. Ah. Ok. Ah, oh, entonces, ah, tú llevas pelotas de béisbol para el autógrafo. Sí. Ah, ah, no quieres un autógrafo en papel. Uh, en tarjetas. Ah, en, o oh, en las tarjetas de, la de los las, jugadores. Las tarjetas o uh, fot fotógrafos. Ah, oh, ok, ok, bien, sí, tiene sentido, it makes sense, tiene sentido. Ah, sí, um, porque tienes una colección, toda una colección, sí, de autógrafos, sí. Sí. Y sí. eso, es, y, uh, y, y tienen valor, they are, they have value, tienen valor, ¿no? Um. 
Uh, Valor no... sentimental, por lo menos. <ríe> sí, y uh, la mayoría uh, no, no tiene, no tiene uh, mucho valor. Ok. Um, ¿Cuánto tiempo, how much time, cuánto tiempo uh, se dedican los jugadores a firmar signing, a firmar a, a, para los aficionados, for fans? No, uh, no. ¿Cuánto tiempo se dedica? ¿Cuánto tiempo? Say that again. Se de, ¿Cuánto tiempo se dedica a firmar como las tarjetas o, los, uh, o las pelotas de béisbol? Uh, no, no entiendo. No. Um, how much time do they set aside or dedicate to that? Oh. No, no demasiado. Pa, no, no demasiado. <laughs> ah, poco tiempo, just a little bit of time. Okay. Y uh, solo. Uh, um, y ocurre antes de la. A, a, solo a, a guían de los jugadores. Okay. Ah. Todos no firman. All of them don't sign. No. Ah. Okay. Okay. A ver. Bien. Ah, uh, gracias. Entonces, ¿qué más? ¿Qué más tiene algo? No. I'll go a bit. Okay. I'm on, I'm on, and I'm on the thing. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, soy voluntario todos los martes um, con ayuda y refugiados y personas sin hogar. Ah, sí, bien. Ok, entonces sí, eres a, uh, uh, te dedicas a ser voluntaria, sí. sí. Bien. Uh, sí, para muchos jubilados es popular uh, pasar un rato como voluntario en algún lugar, ¿verdad? Y es importante, es parte de su rutina. Uh, sí. Por ejemplo, tengo, tengo, una, tengo una amiga que es voluntaria en los jardines uh, botánicos de fin, uh, Phoenix. Sí. Uh, tengo otra amiga que uh, pasa como dos días a la semana como voluntaria en un rescate de uh, gatos, cat rescue place, sí, ah. sí para animales, uh, para rescatar a los animales y para uh, buscar hogares y pa buscar familias para uh -huh. los animales. Uh -huh. uh, bien, uh, es muy popular pasar un rato uh, de voluntario. También. Excelente. Um, y hay otra, hay otra amiga que pasa un rato como voluntaria en el hospital para ayudar a la gente en, la, en, la, en el hospital, los que visitan al, al hospital. Uh, ok. Bien. ¿Alguien más? No, I could try. Uh, ok, vale. Ok. Uh... Mi rutina es diferente uh, miércoles por que group online. I, uh, it sense enough. There. Uh, gr uh, 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 group en línea online en oh, línea yeah. en línea. Okay, bien, bien. Yeah. Gracias. Bueno, ok. Uh, entonces, ¿alguien más o no? ¿Anybody else? Or... No. Shall we do? Ok. Uh, our little preview. Uh, one thing I want to give you for next week, but I feel we need to do a little groundwork, 
before we do it is that uh, you will have, uy, van a tener, tengo que, uh, momentito, aquí. Uh, el video que van a tener, el video que ustedes van a tener uh, para esta semana es un video uh, que compara, compara, comparar es un cognado. Comparar es un cognado. It's a cognate, ¿sí? Un video que compara uh, el precio de la comida en tres países. Tres países, ¿sí? Uh, y lo que pasa es que esta chica aquí, uh, ella que se llama Shell, y ella vive en Colombia. Los precios, the prices, los precios que ustedes van a escuchar Uh, cuando ella habla de los precios en Colombia, son precios que no parecen muy altos. They're going to seem really high to you. Okay. And this is always driven by the fact that monetary units are different in different places. There will be things you'll hear her talking about that go into the hundreds and thousands. And once Americans start hearing prices in the thousands for items they start tend to freak out okay um but keep in mind that she'll be talking about the colombian monetary units so it'll be very normal for her to talk about some food items being in the thousands but it's all very relative yes see uh pero tengo que prepararlos. I need to prepare you guys for the fact that we need to maybe do some um, number review. Okay. <laughs> yeah? Uh, yeah. Vale la pena. It is worth it because <laughs> even those of us who are very good, and many of you are, are uh, have a very easy time presenting some little sentences, Once we've got to think about a, a number for a temperature, for something that goes over the, or getting close to a hundred or into the hundreds or into the thousands, it can be kind of tough for us to call those numbers to mind very, very easily. Uh, entonces, uh, vamos a ver. I want to try to show you some things and I'll send you these because these are kind of color coded. Okay. as well um aquí bien um this is kind of a quick number review but i try to group some things you know one through ten even i had elementary school students who could do the one into ten even english students who natively are english speakers here in the southwest learn that one through ten at a very young age all right um but Uh, sometimes it helps to see things grouped or color coded in some ways so that you can kind of get a handle on some of the numbers issues. Bien. Uh, once we get past the uh, uno hasta diez, right? Or cero, I should really have a zero in there. Cero is zero, uh, C E R O, cero. Uh, but uh, once you get past diez, yeah. You've got to start thinking a little bit. And the first chunk we want to look at is that 11 through 15 chunk. Yeah. Because these are things that get will, will get repeated. Okay. Um, the one through 10 bit, you know, if you've got a, a number that's in the in the teens, you know, 56, you're still repeating the six number, right? Or 125, you're repeating the 100 and then the 20 number and the 5 number. So we need to know that that 1 through 10, that's your basic building block because the 1 through 10 will get, those numbers will get repeated when you 
start getting into bigger numbers, right? Because they'll get, you know, this stretch through here will get reused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you build into bigger numbers, but um, <clears throat> we need to break it up beyond the 10 thing into some blocks and the 11 through 15 block is the first one because they tend to be one word units, kind of like English will use 12. It's a one word thing. Yeah. Uh, 13, right? Our teen numbers. Um, so we've got uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And that 11 through 15 unit you should treat as the one word next step up unit, right? Um, so we have single word designations for these words, once, doce, which is like dos, but we add the sound e to the end of dos, dos to doce. From tres, we add the e sound to tres, trece, 13. Uh, 14 is the, the odd one, catorce, it's a long word, catorce, 14, yeah. It looks a little bit like cuatro, but it's got a bunch of letters jumbled <laughs> up in the middle, right? So you just need to kind of memorize that. Catorce is our 14 number. And then quince, quince, which isn't based on cinco, right? You can think of 15 as 10 plus five, right? But they don't take that word cinco and use it as a base for the 15 number. It it, it goes back to a different number that goes back to Latin and that that Keen, uh, Q-U-I-N, is tied back through uh, the Latin sources that it had to do with five-ish idea, yeah? And Keen says used for 15. And here's our next block. Once you get through the 16 through 19 block, which I put in green here, uh, it becomes like a math problem, yeah? So it's a 10 and 6. 10 and 7, 10 and 8, 10 and 9. So that block is kind of the math problem of Spanish that will always work. 10 and 6, 16. 10 and 7, 17. 10 and 8, 18. 10 and 9, 19. Yeah. Um, once you get into the double digit numbers, now you need to. Uh, know what the base is, and it'll take that base, in the case of 20, 20, yeah, and it'll add on, the 20 will add on whatever number you need from here to go from the 20 to the 29 block. So this is where you get that repetition again of the 1 through 10 numbers get repeated a lot once you get into the double digit numbers because... You know, 20, 20, 21 will be 21, 22, 23. Again, it's kind of like the math problem. 20 and 1, 20 and 2, 20 oh. and 3. See? Um, mm -hmm. One important thing to know, pronouncing this word, this is kind of like uh, you brought up the, Cindy, the English, you know, the <laughs> instead of uh, jubilados, <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, we want to make sure we don't confuse this 20, 20. Think of veins in your arms, 20, connect vein <laughs> to the English word vein, okay, 20. There is another word, viento, which has no connection to 20. And a lot of people tend to confuse viento, which means wind, yeah, you don't want to confuse that. Uh, the V-I-E versus V-E-I is an important thing with pronunciation because if you use viento, uh, wind, you'll be, and it's very confusing. That has nothing to do with numbers and that would confuse people. So you want to make sure it's, your pronunciation is really, really precise for that word, veinte, veinte. See, Bente. don't invert, Bente. you know, the E-I has to be A-E, A, bang, bang. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, not B I E, viento, but veinte. Bien? Vente. Okay. Vente. And then we get our treinta word, Vente. right? Our thirty. And again, you'll just combine the one through nine combos to get thirty one, thirty two, thirty three. 31, 32, 33, but, you know, it'll kind of run together quickly, so do be prepared for that. That's one of those things. It won't be like the auctioneer sound at your soccer match quite that fast, but it'll be fast, right? Uh, 40, which has a little stronger tie into cuatro, because you've got that qua sound leading that off, 40 for 40. Cinquenta, which has, again, a stronger tie to the word cinco, five, cinquenta. All of these enta, enta, enta things, uh, think of it this way. Enta, enta is like our English idea of using 50, 40, 60, 70. Yeah, that T idea in English is what is conveyed with that suffix enta. Uh, yeah, uh, even veinte, it's not quite, quite enta, but it's close. Uh, treinta, cuarenta, cincuenta, sesenta, setenta, ochenta, noventa. Those enta endings are pretty close to our idea in English of using a T for four T, fifty, six T. See? Bien. Okay. Uh, if somebody is talking about the flat out uh, 100 number, 100 with no other attachment to it, just even 100, it gets the shortened form of 100, right? But anytime it's over 100, anything, it's more than just the even number of 100. Then we need the long form of ciento, right? Ciento uno, ciento dos, ciento diez, ciento once, ciento cincuenta, 150, right? Uh, ciento, anything over the even 100 needs that longer where we end, add the to onto cien. Ciento, right? Um, hundreds, hundreds will be based on the word ciento, but because they're hundreds, more than 100, they need an S on the end to indicate that plural idea. So cientos, hundreds, yeah? And we'll add in the front of the word cientos, the number of hundreds that you have. So it'll be dos cientos, two hundred, tres cientos, three hundred, cuatro cientos, four hundred. I'm going to skip the five hundred for a reason. Seis cientos, six hundred, see? Sete cientos, seven hundred, ocho cientos, eight hundred, nove cientos, nine hundred. So um, the hundreds are have a real logic base to them. See, uh, you'll have uh, a plural cientos idea with the number of hundreds attached in front of the word cientos. This one is the outlier, the one we've got in this kind of an aqua color because where you've got 300, 400, 600, 700, and those sound like, you know, close to or even right on the money for your uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Well, this isn't based on cinco. Yeah. The 500 number does not use the word cinco, five, to say 500s. It goes back, it goes back to this 15 number. This funny Latin thing of Q-U-I. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Q-U-I-N, I guess, to be more specific. Okay, so uh, for 500, you get the outlier, the odd, the pattern breaker word of quinientos. Quinientos. And that quin, again, goes way back to an old Latin word that talks about five. So quinientos. 
five hundreds, right? See, bien, okay, we're pretty good there. Yeah. See, so far, See? so okay, so all these will piggyback. So let's say you, uh, ooh, let's let's pick something maybe a, a little bit shorter here. Four hundred. Let's say you want to say four hundred fifty. 450. So we piggyback and we just add on the 50 part for the 450. Como se dice 450? We have to piggyback on the 50 to attach it to the 400. 400. Yeah. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. Cuenta, uh, cuenta. 450, and notice 450, we just add on the 50 part. Huh. We don't need an extra E word. Oh. 450. 450. Let's take a different example. Let's take, por ejemplo, 620. We're just going to piggyback the 20 word onto the 600. Say 620. 20. That's all you need. You just piggyback the 20 next to 600. 620. Okay. Otro ejemplo. Uh, por ejemplo, 370. We're just going to piggyback our 70 word onto the 300 word. 360. 370. 370. 370. 370. Bien? Sí? Bien. Okay. The only way you need the word E, the and, is if it becomes something like this. 375. Now it's 370 y hey. cinco. Sí. 370 y cinco. Now we need an E. So in other words, the only reason we need an E is because of the only re we need, mm. reason we need the word E is because I've got a digit higher than zero uh, hanging off the back end there, just there as the last digit. That's when you need the word E, and, and no other time. Okay. See? So let's see another example like that. Uh, por ejemplo. 283. This Actually, let's make this a little bit easier. Let's just make it 280 first. 280. Okay. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. If I change it to, whoop, 284. Now you need the yard. 284. E4. E4. Now I need an E. Right? The minute I've got something higher than zero here in the last place Column. number mm. yeah the number yeah in the ones place <laughs> as right. a math teacher might say i guess uh the ones place right now i need the word e <clears throat> 280 e cuatro. Cuatro. Sí? all the way up to nine so you go all the way from up to one nine see si? all the way up to nine okay 285, 286, 
287, 284, 289. Mm -hmm. Right. All the way up to nine. Sí, Sam. Tienes razón. You are correct. Gracias. Okay. Uh, all right. Anytime this last one's place is a zero, you don't need the word E. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 280. Dos, uh, 260. 290. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No word E, right? right? If the last, if the ones place has a zero in it, you don't need any no, no, word E no in e. there. Yeah. ¿Sí? ¿Bien? Okay. Yeah. okay. Vale. Claro. That makes sense? Sí. 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 Okay. Sí. Okay. So, uh, ento, let, let's take just a couple other uh Easy examples here. Let's take some 700 examples. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice 730? 730. 730. 730. 730. But once yeah. you graduate it up to... 735, it's... 5. 5. 735. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 810. 810. 810. Perfecto. 810. O como, por ejemplo, 840. 840. 840. 840. But once I bump it up to 844, it becomes 844. Y Wow. 844. And when you hear people say it, because the most important thing with numbers is really that you hear it properly and you understand and a digit pops into your brain when you hear the number. That's the most important skill because you're not going to have to necessarily say a lot of numbers yourself, but you're going to hear a lot of numbers, especially for prices or address numbers, or, you know, distances, or, you know, whatever, you know, it depends on the context you're using them in. But, um, you know, you, to, your ability for that number to, is a digit pop up in your brain. That's the skill you need to really work. 844, that's the way you're going to hear people saying it. And so you got to be prepared for cobbling that together in your brain as listening comprehension, which is why you've got the, the upcoming video for this week. See? Uh, okay. Um, let's work a, a, a one more hundreds number. Yeah. Uh, see, sí. como por ejemplo, como por ejemplo, uh, 900, 900, 900, uh, 960, 960. 960. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. When people say that, they're going to, it's going to sound like a long string because for them it is. 960. <laughs> See? So think about it. When you 
So I want you to look at this example and think about it. The reason it sounds, the reason it is hard for us as English speakers to hear this <laughs> and string it all together is look at what is happening. 900 ends in a s s s sound, right? And the next word begins in the s s s same sound. Yeah. Yeah. So when somebody says this, here's what happens. Think about it. When a word ends in an S and the next word begins in an S, here's what you're hearing. It's actually two words, but you're hearing that last S of novecientos string into the next word beginning with an S. 960. You're not going to hear people pause between those two words. You see it above as two separate words, yeah. but when it's pronounced, yeah. it's going to sound like one, one. monosyllabic word. Oh. 960. There will be no pause, oh. right? No, the last letter S blends right into the beginning word of s so no, it's going to sound all like one thing being run together okay see where i'm going with that see yep. 960. nobody's going to say 960. <laughs> yeah, right. it's going to all <laughs> run together okay. only when you have two s's, only when yeah. you have two s's. it's going to okay. sound like one word running together mm. Okay. Because when we okay. say numbers quickly, yeah, even in English, that happens. But it's going to be a very, a very uh, kind of mind blowing thing, <laughs> yeah, for the English brain, right? Novecientos uh, sesenta, and and that looks like one great big, oh my gosh, my brain is just exploding, kind of word, <laughs> yeah. Right, because literally one word is sliding into the next word. So, you yeah. know, be prepared, yeah? Because when you look at the video, when you hear the video, and, and you, you probably should turn on the uh, uh, closed caption, I'll show you how you should do that when you get into that. Okay, so number 160, and let's get one E sound added to it. 968 is going to become... Now we need an E because, you. yeah, I've got a digit in the ones place that is higher than zero. See? 968. 968. And it's all going to slide together. Okay? Bien? Okay. Last thing I'm going to leave you with is mil and mil, mil is your friend because mil is going to stay mil <laughs> <laughs> even if it becomes plural yeah you had to know that the hundreds get an s at the end 300 400 500 they all end us the end in s but yeah, mil yeah. is mil right so uh mil becomes dos mil. This is easy. Dos mil. See? Si. Uh, si. uh, diez mil. <laughs> cuatro mil. Ah, uh, yeah. Cuatro mil. Okay. You just need the little number connected to mil. Okay. And I'll send you this whole uh cheat sheet thing here uh okay. but what i want you to know and i want to make sure that when you've got the video for the upcoming week oh oh momentito i want to show you where to turn on your if you're not a person who turns on closed captions, always look down here for the CC box 
And with this, I think it will automatically pop up in Spanish. If on your system it does not, know that next to the CC box, look at the little gear icon that is settings and uh, hit subtitles and select Spanish if you need to. I think in this one, it will automatically go to Spanish. Yeah. Most of them do. Yeah. Makes it easy. But just so the, para que sepan, just so you know. Yeah. See? Uh, so I'm going to let him do with a little intro. Comprar productos iguales, específicos. Ah, tenemos que comparar productos iguales. We have to compare the same products. Productos iguales, equal products, the same kind of products, específicos. And you'll see how it is very ingenious. Andrés done. hará las compras en España. Uh, Andrés will do the purchases in Spain. Y Andrea hará las compras en Estados Unidos. Ah, Andrea uh, hará, la, and that hará is from hacer, hará, will do, will make, will make the purchases. Oh, no, 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 okay. Hará las compras is will make the purchases en Estados Unidos. Y Chel hará sus compras en Colombia. Y Chel hará sus compras en Colombia. Now, the numbers you're going to hear Chel doing are kind of mind-blowing because they're in the uh, monetary unit for Colombia. And you're going to hear thousands and hundreds <laughs> pop up a lot. So that's where you're going to need a little bit of a mindset. Yeah. And then they're going to do like a sum of totaling the whole thing up, a grand total at the end. But they'll compare each uh, uh, food item in onesies and then the whole bill, grocery bill at the end. Sí? Bien? Uh -huh. Sí. <laughs> Bien? Perfecto. Okay. Bien? And I think I'm going to have a little assignment uh, for you to uh, uh, do this week to tag on to that for us to do as a speaking drill at the end. So something you can prep for to talk about something off of your grocery bill. So I'll add a little file for you to think about that uh, and come with some items to talk about next week. See, ¿Sí? todo bien. Todo bien. Todo bien. Fantástico, muy bien. Entonces, sí, son, uy, son las ocho y uh, cuatro. Uh, I went a little bit over, but not too badly. Uh, sí. Bueno, y nos vemos la semana que viene, ¿no? Sí. Sí, Gracias. perfecto. Perfecto. Um, I think I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of a reading thing, which may be a little bit of a challenge, but it'll be kind of fun. Uh because I think it's not, even though it, it, I think you'll be able to follow the idea, even though it's going to have, uh, you don't have to read the whole article, but um, see if you can puzzle together just to get the big picture. Um, so, you know, and I, I, I'm kind of debating on how I'm going to organize this for you. Um, una persona que tiene, sí, um, un brazo con uh, oh, inteligencia artificial. Ah, bien. Y uh, nos muestra, sí, el brazo que la persona que tiene con uh, inteligencia artificial para manipular, sí, las cosas, que es interesante. So you're going to have that little item. Uh, Add it into your files as well. Todo bien? All good? Sí. Todo bien? Gracias. Fantástico. Entonces, sí, nos vemos más tarde. Espero que tengan muy buena semana. I hope you all have a really good week. Sí. Yeah, sí. Gracias. Y nos vemos más tarde. Sí, nos vemos la semana que viene. We'll see you guys next week. Bueno.